In this tutorial from thefunkyprofessor.com, I'm going to cover the course and the distribution of the radial nerve. Now the radial nerve is one of the nerves that supplies the upper limb, and it arises from that complex network of nerves from the brachial plexus. Now there are so many nerves that supply the upper limb and it can get quite confusing, so I'll use memory joggers to help me remember what each nerve does. For the radial nerve, I think of three words. I think of radiating, extending and posterior. Now I think of radiating, which is similar to radial, because the radial nerve supplies the whole of the upper limb. I think of extending because it supplies the extensors in the arm and the forearm. And I think of posterior because it supplies the muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm and posterior compartment of the forearm. So let's start at the top. The radial nerve has extensive nerve roots. It arises from all of the nerve roots of the brachial plexus. That's from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. The radial nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. It lies posterior to the axillary artery. It lies on top of the muscles of subscapularis, latissimus dorsi and teres major. And at this level, the radial nerve picks up a friend it picks up the profunda brachii. Now this is a branch of the brachial artery. These two structures pass behind into the posterior compartment of the arm by traversing through an interval, which is in fact the triangular interval. Now the triangular interval, as you would expect, has three boundaries. Superiorly is the lower border of teres major muscle. Medially is the long head of triceps and laterally is the shaft of the humerus. Now once it passes through into the posterior compartment, the radial nerve supplies the triceps muscle. It also supplies anconius. Now here's something that might surprise you. The radial nerve actually pierces through the lateral intermuscular septum of the arm and it enters the anterior compartment of the arm. What's it doing here, you may think? Well, as it does so, it supplies the lateral fibers of the brachialis muscle which I know is a flexor of the forearm. It also supplies brachioradialis, which is another flexor. So it has a little flirtation, if you like, with supplying the flexors. But the brachioradialis is a member of the so-called mobile wad of three, the other two being extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis, which are unquestionably extensors. So you can maybe forgive the radial nerve for supplying the brachioradialis. In front of the lateral epicondyle, the radial nerve gives off a very important branch, the posterior interosseous nerve. And it is in fact the posterior interosseous nerve that supplies extensor carpi radialis brevis. So extensor carpi radialis longus is supplied by the radial nerve and the brevis is supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve. Now, as the posterior interosseous nerve enters the forearm, it does so by passing between the two heads of supinator. All three nerves that enter the forearm, that is to say the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the radial nerve or posterior interosseous nerve, pass between two heads of a muscle. The median nerve passes between the two heads of pronator teres, the ulnar nerve passes between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris, and the radial nerve passes between the two heads of supinator. It supplies supinator, and the posterior interosseous nerve also supplies the other extensors in the forearm, which is extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, and it goes on to supply the deep compartment, which is extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis longus, and extensor indices. So what about the other parts of the radial nerve? Well, the radial nerve continues down the forearm as the superficial radial nerve. It passes underneath the muscle of brachioradialis. As it enters into the hand, it crosses over the tendons in the snuff box, or the tendons of the first compartment of the wrist, which is abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Once it enters into the hand, it supplies the skin over the dorsal aspects of the hand. So what about the sensory supply of the radial nerve? Well, it's actually quite extensive. There's that word again, extending, extensive. In the arm, it gives off two branches, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm 
and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It also gives off another sensory branch, which is the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. The upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm is, of course, a branch of the axillary nerve. So that's quite a lot to take in. So let's start from the top and summarize the radial nerve. When you think of the radial nerve, think of three words. Think of radiating, extending, and posterior. So the radial nerve comes from all root levels of the brachial plexus, from C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. The radial nerve is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, and it lies immediately posterior to the axillary artery. On its way into the posterior compartment of the arm, it picks up a friend. That is the profunda brachii. In the posterior compartment of the arm, the radial nerve gives off two sensory branches, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It supplies muscular branches to the triceps and the anconius. Then it does that surprising thing by piercing through the lateral intermuscular septum where it supplies the lateral most fibers of brachialis. It also supplies the mobile wad of three. In fact, it supplies brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus, to be precise, before then giving off the posterior interosseous nerve. And it's the posterior interosseous nerve that supplies extensor carpi radialis brevis. The posterior interosseous nerve continues into the forearm by passing between the heads of the supinator. It then supplies all the extensors of the forearm extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor, digi extensor digiti minimi. It supplies the deep compartment, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis longus, and extensor indices. The superficial radial nerve continues down the forearm underneath the brachioradialis muscle. It continues down with the radial artery. It supplies the skin over the dorsal aspect of the hand. So there you have it. The radial nerve is quite a big one, but it is an important one, I'm afraid, and it gets asked again and again and again. Your anatomy matters.